on your sequencing thing that I sent you guys. Um, basically, um, you'll have a warm up, which sometimes I do the downward dog. Sometimes I um, do like a child's pose uh, with my arms in the straps. Sometimes I do um, twisting or my, you know, take your arm out to the side. So those would just be warm ups. Um, when I put it down on the low back, um, you know, we kind of have it on the back and like this, and then we hinge forward into the flying plank, and then we have it back. We take it down to the, the middle of our ribs, which kind of warming up the spine and activating the core. Um, and then upper body strength would be um, us, you know, lifting and jumping backwards and going upside down. Um, would just be pulling our knees to our chest and trying to squeeze and hug that midline and trying to pull our, our body up towards our, our chest. Um, Another one would be even sitting in the 90-90. That takes a lot of arm strength to sit back with your arm, you know, parallel over your, your legs and just keeping that tight. And then when you come up, you squeeze. Uh, so there's a lot of different arm ones. The um, um, Superman or whatever. So when you're going upside down, you do go into a push-up. Um, so traction would be anything that's hanging upside down or anything inverted. Um, so when you just go upside down and you double wrap and you just hang to the floor, that's traction. But there's a lot of different other ways to do traction. Um, you know, going upside down is a little bit of traction when you're holding the, the straps down here. Um, and I showed you guys four different ways to get your, your clients in that pose. Um, core, you know, I, I do a lot of boat. Um, and then course the flying planks, when we go into flying plank, those are core um, dynamic would just be anything you're kind of pressing into. So like um, a flying crescent lunge would be dynamic because um, we're kind of pressing, we're still stretching, but we're actively um, engaging our whole body kind of in that movement. Hip opener would be when we have it down on our hips and we do the down dog and we have it down here on the lower leg or it would be, um, uh, you know, when we take our soles of our feet together when we're upside down, we kind of pull our pelvis forward. That's a good um, hip opener. Warrior two is a good hip opener. There's a lot of good hip openers. There's almost so many good, you know, hip openers that, that um, you almost can't not get a hip opener. <laughs> like you'd have to try to not. Um, even just taking your heel in the sling and then, you know, sitting in a, a flying pigeon you know, that's a hip opener. Uh, twisting, so anytime we twist, so if we're in a down dog and we twist our bodies, you know, this way, or sometimes I'll have you guys at the leg and then we'll twist and take our gaze over our right fingertips. Um, so you wanna make sure that we're, we're still incorporating all the twisting in um, all of our workouts. A forward fold, um, you know, so that's just a forward fold. Oh, I love these so much. So that could even be considered a down dog or, um, a forward fold or, you know, just anything like that. So, um, and then final relaxation. And so the, the different ways that I do the relaxation, you guys have seen, sometimes I do heel hammies. Sometimes I do um, where they're hanging in swing and they hang by their neck. Sometimes I just put them in a full cocoon, which their black clips up and they're in a full cocoon. Um, sometimes they'll be in a, 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 a neck thing and a, and a foot thing and a heel hammy. Um, so I just kind of let them kind of do sometimes, uh, if we end in the top, we'll usually end either in a complete cocoon or hanging by the neck, or if we end on the ground, we'll usually end in heel hammies or the neck and the leg. <laughs> so, which I know look weird, but they feel amazing. So, um, so if you look at your sequence, just like with the other one, it's just not as strict. It's not so sequential, sequential, ah, there you go. <laughs> um, so it, it just tells you basically warm up, posterior chain, upper body strength, traction, core, back bend, dynamic, hip opener. 
So you just have to make sure that you get all those in there. And then also I want to make sure the first thing that you guys check, I don't care if you come in here and all the swings are up tomorrow. Actually, you know what? I probably won't put them up tomorrow just for that reason. But um, I still want you guys to always check your sling. You need to always check students come in here and move the swings around constantly. So you need to always check your swings. You need to always open them up, make sure both carabiners are completely closed. Um, so remember these are our carabiners. So a lot of times, especially when they get moved around, they don't close all the way. And it's usually not a big deal, but we don't ever want that just in case somebody flips the wrong way and catches it exactly perfect. Like we don't need those scenarios. Let's just have a closed carabiner. Um, and so just making sure that everything is hung the right way, it's hung through both ropes and we're not having a half rope situation. Make sure that all your ropes are not like worn out. So do an actual safety check. You are gonna be um, graded heavily on that because that's, um, that's probably the, the scariest thing about doing these um, other than my teaching. But you, you just wanna make sure because if, you know, if it's a malfunction of the, the hardware, you know, that could have been resolved and, and, you know, nobody wants somebody down on the ground hurt or anything like that. So, so safety check is very, very important. I need to get better at it too. But, um, cause usually I'm the only one that messes with them. And if my students mess with them, they've been taught so much how to mess with them that I'm like pretty uncomfortable with them. But, um, but usually I still um, check and I'm, I'm often taking them down and switching them around anyway because I have so many different sizes of people coming into class. <laughs> so, um, oh, so make sure your safety check is done. Um, also finding your seat. So whether you open and you sit in it, I'm gonna show you in a minute, whether you reach your hands back behind you and grab your high handles and jump in it, or whether you just kind of grab a side and sit in it, whether you put your feet over into it, but finding your seat means somebody you're sitting in the seat. So, and you don't want to not be able to sit in your seat. So make sure that it's one thing that you are, um, you're very comfortable with and you're not struggling to get in your own swing. It doesn't make your, your students feel very comfortable. So you are going to be graded on how you get in your swing and how you cue others and help others to get into their swing. Um, upside down instructions. Uh, are they clear? Um, you know, when, when you're going upside down, one, you need to make sure, are there, is their head going to hit the ground? So kind of looking around, because sometimes people might have a shorter torso, I mean, a short, shorter legs and a, and a taller torso, and that can be a disaster. So um, just trying to actually think about the difference in their torso versus their legs. And I know that sometimes we have a lot of people who jump into class, but you just wanna make sure, you know, that um, if people are gonna go upside down, you know, you make sure that they've got the right grip. Um, their fingertips usually should be, you know, facing each other if they're gonna go upside down. Um, so, but just, you know, make sure that your upside down instructions are very clear. Um, and then did the class feel safe? Uh, your body language, you know, gestures in the poses. Are you, are you, you know, reaching with them? Are you just telling them really reach, really just, re just reach, just get it, just get it. Or are you reaching with them? So learning the difference in your voice and how it carries and how the energy of it carries. So when it's reaching, we're reaching and you squeeze and we take that other one, we press, you know, so give them those, the feeling cues almost. And, and it just makes your class more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess interactive and inviting and um, all that fun stuff. Um, demonstration, are you gonna demonstrate uh, a lot of the poses or are you gonna walk them through it and do it with them? You know, so just kind of thinking of some of those things and just make sure that your cueing is enough for um, people to understand what you're, what you're saying to be able to go upside down. So maybe practicing on your friends, you know, just giving them cues of how they would go upside down. Cause a lot of times I don't say, okay, we're gonna go upside down now. I'm just like, take your legs out wide, 
grab your fabric, head backwards, dude, wrap those legs. So I don't, I don't give them a lot of opportunities to be like, wait a minute, oh, I, I don't know if I'm gonna go upside down. They're already upside down and they're just like, oh. <laughs> so, um, so it just depends on what kind of uh, teacher, you know, I'm more of a shock factor teacher. Uh, you might be more of a, you know, coddling like, okay, like next we're gonna take our leg out. I'm not that teacher, I'm working on it. <laughs> but um, so just, you know, just so whatever kind of teaching that you're gonna teach, just make sure. Um, so if, if you're gonna just tell them um, and then go upside down with them and not, you know, be with them and, and walking around that your, your um, cueing is super concise and they, there's no question, they understand exactly what you're talking about. Um, and then uh, shared energy uh, by teaching next to students. So yeah, because a lot of times, you know, there will be a student that's like confused or that student will be like, oh, what the heck? Or, you know, so just um, if, if, if you, you know, um, noticed any of that, um, if you're observing, you know, maybe you can kind of get some feedback and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, so your setup of poses, are they clear? Do they transition well? Do they go together? You know, not necessarily do they go together, but uh, technical age, uh, language, position, grip, leg locks. Um, so again, remember we're, we're cueing the wide finger overhand grip. So we're reaching forward. Our arm is straight and directly in front of us like Superman, so it's not out to the side. Remember, we're trying not to create more um, instability for that very narrow joint. So we want it as close to our body as possible and pull down our back. Wide finger overhand grip, straight arm, wide finger overhand grip. So with your, with your um, uh, just hands up on top and you're pressing forward. And so we usually have this when we're kind of relaxing through our arms um, or when we go into a flying dancer and then um, having your parallel grip, it's a very important grip. We use this grip quite often. So we'll do this in our, in our squats. We'll do this in our, um, you know, going upside down, we'll take our arms straight. Um, when people are going upside down, you want them to straighten their arms as quickly as possible when they go upside down. The more bent their elbow is, the more they're taking weight all throughout their body. But as soon as they straighten those arms, they become very solid and, and just, um, it's not so much weight, just directly on their hands. Um, are you cueing inhales and exhales? You know, make sure that you're um, doing that. Uh, tips for poses or maybe telling them, I, a lot of times I like to say, uh, you know, in, when I do this posture, you know, you should feel it uh, on the outside of your right hip or you should feel this here. You know, that kind of helps them um, you know, associate, okay, oh, okay, so let me, okay, now I feel it, you know, so sometimes they might need to adjust when you can kind of tell them, because especially in a sling class, a lot of times we're moving a little faster, you know, our toes might not be angled as, as well as they should be, or could be because we're moving faster, so we're not getting as much of the deep, awesome, or strengthening pose that we could be in a sling class, but it's also less risky, right, because we're, we're not putting all that, um, you know, all that weight on directly onto our joints. We've got most of our body flying halfway up in the swing. So uh, there's a lot of, you know, benefit to that too. So just making sure that you're, you're cueing and you're doing all that fun stuff. Can't know your hands in your poses. Um, are you helping people in and out and adjusting straps? Um, nose to toes. Um, so if, when they're going upside down and you go back like this, um, a lot of times it's best if you tell them to watch their toes and just keep going back and just keep watching their toes. That helps people um, with becoming less dizzy. I haven't really seen it to help one way or the other too much, but, um, but it's basically you're, you're supposed to stare at your toes as you're going all the way back and it's just kind of supposed to help with a little bit of that nausea, which I think we've kind of covered a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of people, especially when it's a heated studio like this one is, can get nauseated their first time going upside down. Um, that doesn't mean you should stop. That doesn't mean that um, you shouldn't still push them. 
um, you know, they're gonna they're gonna get nauseated the first time. Sometimes, you know, not every time, but sometimes. And then also, I think we went over the contraindications, which are, you know, the um, high blood pressure and cataracts. I believe are like the big ones. So you want to make sure that you don't um, you don't do that with either one of those. Uh, you you got to make sure that you know they have those things that. <laughs> that's uh, maybe we don't go upside down or maybe you know until you talk to your doctor or something so um and then was your energy a high energy was it flat was it motivating was it serious were you nervous um was it low fun light um authoritative frantic so you know just want to you want to match your voice with what you're teaching so if you want them to relax and you don't want to be like oh my god relax you want to be like and take a breath here, relax your body. So you wanna slow your voice down and just kind of make it more calming, start talking them through breaths. And then if you want to, you know, get them in a really hard pose where you're like, come on, and you lift and you hold and squeeze or press or whatever, then you wanna kind of do that energy with them. So just make sure that your voice is matching the posture and, and what, they're, what the classroom is doing. Um, using someone's name in class is really good. Um, people like to know that you know their name and that they're important, um, but just try not to do it too often. Um, you know, don't look like you're like favoritizing anybody. Um, are you looking at your students while you're teaching? Uh, friend, are you a friendly and, and approachable? Uh, gave personal help in class in class to students. Um, was your timing and your pace great, steady? How was it? Um, how was your voice tone? Um, you know, uh, were you using weak words or phrases like we're gonna and bring and we're gonna bring <laughs> and we're fixing to and grab and grasp us and yonder? Please don't leave, don't, don't put those words in your class. Um, did you use all areas of the room? Um, do, is your voice loud enough where people can hear you? So those are just the basic things. Um, believe me, you guys, if you know the cueing and the breakdown of the poses on the floor, this becomes second nature. This is just such an easier tool and it's easier to teach. It's easier to sequence. It's easier all the way around. Um, uh, and as people get more limber, they will they will find that they're not getting challenged on the swing as much and they need to eventually go to the floor. And, and then that's when we start. So I usually start people on the swing and then get them on the floor and get them, you know, get their muscles built back up uh, or built up. And then, um, and then we do a combination and that's when I start going into the, um, the more advanced classes. And so, and as we advance, you know, we either, a lot of times we can either take away the swing completely, this part, or sometimes we take away the straps completely. Um, there's different things that you can do. I mean, there's probably a thousand plus poses that you can do in one of these. And so it's like the only limitation is in your mind. I have just come in here like multiple times and just like climbed all up in this thing and just recorded myself and was like, okay, that one's cool. Okay, that one is way too complicated to try to get a class into, but it's great for a private, you know? So there are different things like that. Um, there's like super cool tools that you can, cause like I love my caps and everything rolled and and just doing this, like with the, the straps behind your, your legs and just kind of rolling them up and down is like a restorative and in the back of your, knees which is very um you know just kind of helps move a lot of that crap that gets back there um this actually feels really nice i've done some restorative um stuff like this or we'll get in the you know thing and do this or try to pop our you know our our wit or what do they call it the the wife maker or the wiggle makers i forget what it is but it's where the chiropractors go and pull your legs apart and it pops your hips but um, a lot of times we can get into that into um, when we go into a, a flying um, the flying uh, plank. Um, so normally it's on your ankle and then you just lift up. And so sometimes that can give you a little pop down there and it feels nice, but that's also a pose that you wanna take them into very slowly and make sure that they have a good grip on, you know, and, and that their arm is not 
out. So we always want everything stacked. So, I, so try to tell your students, if you're not stacked, then don't try to advance. So advance by becoming stacked and then advance. Um, and then try to lift your leg and then try to do this. So you don't wanna try to take an unstable pose and then try to lift a leg. So you wanna take, you wanna make sure that they can press on the outside of their right hand, but they're stacked first. So if they're still struggling here and their arm is way out here and here, they've got too much stress on that shoulder. They don't need to try to take anything else into that arm um, when they're already unstable just to stack. So um, let's see here. Do, 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 <laughs> I bet y'all's brains are so fried right now. So I will just try to make this quick. I just, um, I feel like we haven't had as a much attention in swing, but I feel like you guys need it more in floor right now anyway. And if you know floor, then swing is just so, so, so easy. And you can just, you can literally play on the swing. The biggest thing I'm looking for when you guys teach your swing class safety. Do you know how to adjust, assist, and help your, your students? Do you know how to make sure that they stay safe? Um, what are your stacking rules? So remembering to keep the knee preferably directly over the ankle because that's a more solid, um, but that's not always possible and that's okay. But we definitely don't want, especially when we're balancing or, or trying to press a lot of um, forward motion, we don't want our knee going past our toes we're taking all of that, that weight into that joint directly. So, um, you know, just kind of making sure, uh, you know, tomorrow night we're gonna go over injuries um, and just kind of what they mean. I, I know we've kind of talked about like all the disc injuries and stuff for the spine, but we'll, we'll also talk about the difference between a strain and a sprain and a break and a, all those different things and, and what all the people will come in with with their self diagnosis and stuff. Um, so I don't know what else. I mean, I will be here all night tomorrow night too. Um, well, there was one that I wanted to show you guys. I don't know what it was now. Hmm. I feel like I've shown you guys almost all of them. <laughs> I doubt it, but it feels like I have. Um, oh wow, I can't even remember what it was. It was, uh, I think I've taught it before. So it's like, um, this is one that I, I learned from my, I actually learned this from one of my, my, my libera dancer guy. <laughs> and so, um, so basically when you go upside down, again, you wanna make sure that um, you are able to comfortably get in and out of your swing. 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 Comfortably, this is not comfortably. That's not comfortably. Comfortably get in and out of your swing. Comfortably get in and out of your swing. No drama swings. <laughs> don't, I don't want to see that. <laughs> that I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure if you don't have the strength to lift yourself up, that you can comfortably. Walk over to your swing, grab the middle of it, take your hands behind you, butterfly them out, open it up and sit your butt in. So make sure you're not fumbling with your swing, but doesn't make your students feel comfortable. <laughs> and so carry it along. So coming back into your swing, and then you wanna make sure that this is not way too high. So this is usually way too high on people. And then especially if they've got t-shirt and shorts and blah, 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 and it's just like, all of that is just like, oh, and it hurts. And so um, obviously if we can get people to wear tight fitting clothes or no cotton and stuff like that, but that doesn't always happen. 
And so try and get your students to squeeze their knees together and then lift their head up towards their knees. I know that's easier said than done. And then you can either try to lower it for them or they can grab it. They can just hook their thumbs under it and then move it down and then lower down. So this is a traction position, spinal traction. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and then you can come all the way up to where your legs come through and then start getting in like almost like a flying frog. So, and this actually hurts and feels good at the same time. It's one of those hurt so good. <laughs> Ooh, you make your hurt so good. Sometimes love don't feel like it should. You make it hurt so okay. <laughs> but enjoy this class. The other one is very, very serious. Um, and this one can be too. Uh, I think you guys saw the one that I did with the ladies the other day, the private I did with them. Um, and so you can make it a very serious, a very slow, a very just calming class and you can also have a lot of fun with it and you can also do a little bit of both and so but just make sure you don't get overconfident in your swing and flip out so i've only I've only fallen out of my swing one time and when it was, i got a little too overconfident and flipped upside down and flipped out the other side <laughs> like just like loud hit the ground I broke my elbow of course I never got it fixed but <laughs> but my doctor was like oh my gosh <laughs> but um it didn't really hurt it just hurt the fact that I teach the class and I fell <laughs> and I was just like wow I don't think you know I just hope to my students were going to be like uh, I don't think we trust you anymore <laughs> okay no so just be careful and don't be overconfident so um, this is the one where I flipped out and you, um, you know, and it's usually pretty safe and secure. It doesn't feel, you know, like it's scary, except for when a lot of people, when they go forward, because if they don't have that core, then they're going to kind of fall forward and then you can help them use their straps. But instead I was like, ah! and I flipped forward as, as hard as I could. And my feet came out of the back and Um, but then, of course, this exercise, you know, is a hip opener. So we're opening up in the hips right here. Um, so you can just hang here. You can try to take your legs up and come into a reverse prayer. Uh, so there's a lot of things that you can do with this pose. You can come in and start doing, uh, you know, push-ups. Um, you can do the, the uh, um, triceps and grab the whole thing and just lower down, bend your elbows all the way and press back up. I do this a lot with my athletes because then they're like, ooh, triceps. And I'm like, ooh, hips. <laughs> so it's like, we meet in the middle. <laughs> and then you just come back up. And then come back out. But yeah, just most of the poses that you're gonna do in here, a lot of them are very, very similar. Um, when we do, this one, this is basically our standing leg raise. You know, this is our pigeon. Um, you know, the other day when I had you guys stand up, you know, and then take your leg out, it was a standing leg raise. And then we flip up and over, and then we're in um, a flying dancer. So, like I said, this one is a lot more. You just got to get on it and start practicing and just knowing what body parts you're using. But that's the cool thing about doing it. To at the same time with your other training because you're learning the same body parts at the same time, same cueing, and so it just makes it a, a much easier transition for you to be able to teach this um, from the floor. So anyway, ooh, I look like, <laughs> uh, believe it or not, I've been working a lot. <laughs> wow, I look really pretty right now. Um, but if you guys have any questions, let me know and I will see you soon for your finals for a swing class. <laughs>